Family Theater presents Joan Leslie and Arthur Shields. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Employees Only, starring Arthur Shields. Now, here is your hostess, Joan Leslie. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray, pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Employees Only, starring Arthur Shields as Tim. Oh, can you tell me where I'll find the frying pans? Household, fourth floor. Oh, that's fine. Just let me off at four, then. You'll have to take another car, ma'am. Employees only. But I, I just missed one. Can't Sorry, you... Sorry, talk... lady. Employees only. Well, of all things, I... Oof! Oof yourself, missus. What are you walking around backwards for? Didn't you see me standing here? Well, to tell the truth, since I can't see women at all, I'd hardly be making an exception in your case. Well, I like that. Now, would you be kind enough to step aside? You're blocking the door to the elevator. If you aren't the rudest man... Eleven, I... Charlie. Ha-ha! <laughs> You can't get up in this one. <laughs> it's for employees only. I happen to be an employee only. An employee? <laughs> well, I'll report you. What's your name? <laughs> Wouldn't do you any good. I'm one of the principal stockholders. I uh, just bet you are. Uh, wait! Uh, Sorry, ma'am. Go ahead and wail, you old banshee. You know... You're going to get into trouble doing that someday, Tim. Yeah, customers, they're all alike. Coming in here to spend 50 cents, and they think they own the place. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good when you, when you told her about being one of the principal stockholders. I never said a truer word. Who will you tell me holds more stock around this place in one day than a stock clerk? <laughs> I said I like that. And over a period of 12 years, I think I've held as much as any. Mm. <coughs> hey, hey. <coughs> Sounds like you're coming down with something. It's, a, it's only a tickle. Uh, uh, okay. Here we are. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, see you around, Tim. Yep. Hi, Tim. Benny. Banker's hours, huh? Ah, shut your face. I'm working late tonight. That's what they all say. China stockroom. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I'll check it. Yes, just a minute. Oh, morning, Tim. Morning, Judy. Uh, Benny. Yeah? That customer on the floor is still waiting for her order. Uh, the blue willow chop platter, it's a take with. I just put it on the dummy. All right. Hello. Yeah, it should be right down. Mm-hmm. Well, it's on the dummy elevator now. Yeah. Okay. Um, say, Tim. Yeah? You heard the news about the opening down on the floor? In sales? Uh -huh. Yeah. What about it? Oh, Bill said... I mean, Mr. Harrison says he's going to pick someone from the stockroom, and, well, you've got the most time here. Oh, and... no, you don't. But, Tim, it's a promotion. Oh, to what? Dressing up like little Lord Fauntleroy and fighting with a lot of finicky females. But you could work up to an assistant buyer like Bill and... So I could mince around with the rest of them dandies snubbing me friends like that Walter's pipsqueak does to us in the lunchroom. But Sam's on the floor now and, well, he's expected to eat lunch with the other salesmen. Yes, and we're expected to treat him like as if he was the Prince of Wales. Oh, but, Tim... It's no you... use, Julie. I won't do it. Besides, I'd, I'd be no good at the work. Hmm? You could if you wanted to. Uh, tell your friend, Bill, to give it to our Mrs. Canfield Powell, speaking of the British nobility. Shh, she's back in the bins. Oh? 
Now, what's an inventory clerk doing back at the bins when she should be up here helping you with the phone orders? Now, oh, Tim, please, d d don't, don't start anything. Well, I again. can't be starting something that's underway already. Timmy, please, wait a minute. Huh. Well, Lily, look who's here. Good morning, Timothy. Oh, good morning to you, your ladyship. And what, may I ask, are you looking for? We've had an order for a Lennox gravy boat in this pattern, and I... Why don't you give the order to Benny the way you're supposed to? Because he was quite busy, and I felt that Besides he... Besides which, Lennox isn't open stock, so we can't sell one gravy boat or a thousand. It's got to be put on order. I am well aware of that, Timothy, but Julie said... Julie isn't running the stock room. No, but Mr. Harrison is, and he said it would be all right in this case. Well, we'll just see... <coughs> <laughs> we'll just see about it right now. Julie, what's going on around here? Now, Timothy, don't excite yourself. I'll excite whoever I want, Julie. Yes, yes, yes. What's, what's wrong, Tim? The same thing that's always wrong when women don't mind their own business. Timothy, can't you lower your voice oh, a bit? No, 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 it's me manners that don't suit you. I didn't say that. You don't have to. I know, I know what you think of me. Oh, Timothy. Let me tell you something, Mrs. Duke of Windsor. You can't walk in here fresh from jolly old England and five months later be running the place to suit yourself. Here, 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 now. What's the ruckus about? Oh, Bill, you're just the man I want to see. Mr. Harrison, there seems to be a misunderstanding. There's no misunderstanding. I stood all the men I can. Now, hold on, hold on a second, Tim. Julie, what's the difficulty? It's about the order for that Lennox gravy boat. What about it? Well, you see, Mr. Harrison, I went back to the bin. Where well, you'd no business to go on. I do so. Just a minute. Go on, Julie. Well, you said there was a rush on it, and, of course, Benny was busy, so I asked Celia if she'd pick it out from the stock since, well, since Tim wasn't here. Because I'm working late tonight. I know that, Tim. Now, calm down a minute, eh? Well, so, well, then Tim came in, and, well, Bill, before I had a chance to explain, well, the uh, trouble just started. All right, so what's the argument about? The argument, as you choose to call it, is that we don't sell Lennox China by the piece. I know, Timothy, but in this case... Begging your ladyship's pardon, but I've been here a lot longer than you have, and never, never do we make an exception. We sell Lennox by the set, or by the special pieces on order. Am I right, Bill? Well, yes, Tim. Normally, we don't make any exceptions. <laughs> What did I tell you, Mrs. Noah? But in this case, it's a big customer just bought a full set of Lennox from us and broke the gravy boat unpacking it. So we are making an exception. I never heard of such a thing. After all, Timothy, she's one of our best customers. Customers? <laughs> That's all I hear. Customers. What have we got rules for if we can't hold the customers in line? Now take it easy, Tim. <laughs> <coughs> if I had no way, I, I wouldn't let a customer within, within miles of the place. <coughs> now, Timothy, that sounds like a bad cold. Uh, it's nothing at all. It's just a tick. You, uh, doing anything for it? It's doing fine without any help from me. <coughs> oh, really? <coughs> Why don't you go down to the medical bureau and have the doctor take a look? Why, all right, I tell you. Can a, can a man clear his throat without, without, uh, without a meddling, meddling fe <coughs> female? Tim. Tim, what's the matter? I, I don't know. I got a little, a little dizzy for a minute. I, I'm all right now. You are not. You know, well, what, what, what are you trying I'm to do? I'm taking you down to see the doc, and I don't want any arguments from you. Well, I won't go. I say you will, and I'm your boss. No. Yes. Now, are you going to come quietly, or do I have to pick you up and carry you? Yeah, honey? I, I... I wonder if we're doing the right thing. You know, maybe Tim won't want any visitors. After being flat on his back in that boarding house for almost a week, you'll be glad to see us. Oh, maybe. Bill, have... Have you thought about... Well, you know, about what, what I asked you? Hmm? What's that? All about giving Tim the sales job. Oh, honey, it, it, it just wouldn't work. Maybe, but I, he really deserves it. He's been in the stock room longer than, well, all the rest of us put together. And, you know, he knows stock. Yeah, that's not the point. Tim can't deal with people. 
He, well, he flies off the handle too easy. Yes, I know, but... Oh, but, Bill, couldn't you at least give him a chance? I tell you, honey, it wouldn't work. Besides, he, he wouldn't take the job anyhow. Oh, I don't know. Oh, who gets it then? Celia? Sure, she's a natural. Who had years of experience in England. She wants the promotion. And she's familiar with the line, too. Well, you know something? I'll bet she'd step aside for Tim, if, if you ask her to. <laughs> her step aside for Tim? Uh -huh. Well, they fight all the time. <laughs> you mean he fights all the time. You probably don't know this, but she's sweet on him. I happen to know. <laughs> You're loony. All right, so I'm loony. You just watch how pleasant she is tonight. You know something? She's been looking forward to, to visiting him all week. Well, I've heard everything. Oh, honey, there's, there, there's a house. Second one on the right. Oh, yeah. Are they there yet? Hmm? Oh, I don't see... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're waiting out in front. She and Benny. Ten minutes early. Must admit, she looks a little eager. Mm-hmm. Mr. Harrison? Hi, Celia. Oh, well, good evening. Evening, Julie. Evening, Celia. Hi, folks. Hello, Hello Benny. Benny. You've been waiting almost 15 minutes. What kept you? Well, I... Well, we, we, we just couldn't get away right after dinner. That's all, you know. Oh, really? Well, now that we're all here... Uh, Shall we go out? Oh, well. sure thing. You know, I... I was horrified when I heard Timothy had contracted pneumonia. Yeah. You know, he, uh... Must have been in good shape to be able to shake it off that fast. Oh, yes. Thank heaven for those antibiotics. They just work miracles. I got a brother who had pneumonia last winter. He was out of bed in three days. Penicillin. Oh, yes, yes. It's positively wonderful. Yes? Uh, we're friends of Tim Murtaugh's from the store. Oh, yes, yes, come in. I'm Dr. Haskins, uh, Tim's physician. How do you do, Doctor? The landlady just stepped out for a moment, and I said I'd answer the bell. How is Tim, Doctor? Oh, getting along nicely. Uh, by the, uh, by the way, is, is he expecting you? Well, not exactly. It's sort of a surprise. Well, good. He, he could do with a little company. Here we are. Tim. I thought I told you to go home. Tim, uh, you have some callers. Callers? Yeah, hiya, Tim. Well, I be... Thought you might want some cheering up. Benny, what are you doing up this late? Oh, he's with us, Tim. Uh, tell me, uh, how are you feeling? Julie, say, this is a... Oh, well, if it isn't our ladyship herself. Hello, Timothy. We brought you some peanut brittle. Mm, making your annual visit to the poor of the parish. Oh, really, Timothy? I suppose as long as you're here, you might as well sit down. Oh, we're only going to stay a minute, Tim. Yes, we, we just wanted to look in and see how you were. No, I'm fit as a fiddle. Not saying you all find that that's good news. Oh, well, uh, shame uh, on you. Will you be coming back to work soon, Timothy? Next Monday morning, bright and early, eh, Doc? If you promise to take it easy. Yeah, go on with you. I never took it easy in me life. But, Timothy, if the doctor feels you should... Now, will you stop meddling with me, woman? I've covered this much of me life without assistance from a female. Nevertheless, you have to take care of yourself. Doc, listen. Do, do I have to lie here and listen to a lecture like well, that? Well, it might do you some good. Uh, but, matter of fact, it is your bedtime. Well, I guess we can all take a hint, eh? <laughs> well, you get well now, Tim. We're all pulling for you. Oh, you bet we are, too. Well, I, I suppose I should thank you for coming over to watch me suffering. So, thanks. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you well. Dear. I'll be back Monday morning, whether you like it or not. We'll be looking for you, Tim. <laughs> night. Good night. Good, Good night, night, Tim. Tim. And don't argue with your doctor. He's my doctor, isn't he? I'll do what I like with him. <laughs> <laughs> Good well, night. Good night, doctor. I'll show you out. <laughs> How do you like that, Doc? Hmm? My friend's coming all the way uptown just to see how I am. Well, I'd hardly say you gave them a cordial reception. Oh, I don't put on any airs, if that's what you mean. Well, say you don't. Why, you were downright rude to that Englishwoman. Nah, her. I wouldn't pay her any mind. Open your mouth. I've had enough of your pills. Come on, come on. These will make you sleep. Uh, nasty. Nasty little things. Have you, uh, have you ever taken her out? Who? The Englishwoman. Are you daft? 
I can't stand the female. Oh, that's strange. I, you hardly looked at anyone else while she was here. Well, I, I just don't want her to be putting anything over on me, that's all. She's a very attractive woman. Widow? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think so. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't pay any attention. I can see you don't. She's one of those females that wants every man to dress up like an undertaker and, uh, and to talk like a spy. You mean quiet and conservative. Like they do in jolly old England. Oh, Timothy Murta's not her cup of tea. Well, I'll tell you this, Tim. Quiet and conservative is the prescription for you from now on. Ah, I a... didn't say anything about it in front of your friends because I knew you wouldn't want me to. Well, thank you for that. But the heart condition is there. You, you can't do heavy work anymore. And I told you I don't do heavy work. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I lift in salad plates and, and soup bowls. That's not heavy work. Well, not if you don't lift too many at a time. Doc, I'm working in the stock room, not in the warehouse. Then don't forget it, or you'll be sorry. Yo, Tim. Now what? How you feeling? I've been back at work four days, and now you come around inquiring after me health. Well, I noticed you were taking it kind of easy. What do you mean, taking it easy? I work as hard as ever I did. What are you getting hard about? Guy comes back from pneumonia, nobody expects him to break his neck the first week. Well, then why, why all the questions? I just wondered if you felt up to give me a hand with this truck. It's kind of heavy, and well, well, I didn't... Why didn't you say so? Where do you want it? Now, look, if you think it'll be too much for I you... I was pushing these trucks around single-handed when you were in diapers. Now, where do you want it? Just around at this next row of bins, but it's pretty heavy. All right, get over to the other side. You pull, I'll push. All right. Ready? Wait a minute. Yeah, all set. Let's go. Okay. Okay, now we'll just swing around this way. You... You weren't just passing the time of day when you said this was heavy. Just a few more feet. We I, almost got it. I, I, how much more? Almost. I, say, what's wrong? Tim, you look white as a sheet. Oh, shut your mouth. I want the whole place to hear you. What's the matter? Nothing, Ed. I'll be all right in a minute. I, I, I guess I bit off a little too much, that's all. Tim, you look bad. Maybe I should go... No, 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 you stay right here and keep your mouth shut. This, this is nobody's business but mine. But if you're sick, or... I am not sick. You, you want me to lose me job. What do you mean? Uh, I come to find out me, me ticker ain't what it ought to be. And... You mean you got heart trouble? Oh, nothing serious, mine. I, I, that I, I can't tell you if I take it easy. But I don't want everybody to be nosing round about us. You understand, Benny? Why, sure, but... No buts about us. No. Now, you go about your business, Anna, and keep mum. Where are you going? Oh, down to the lunchroom, where I, I can get off my feet for a bit. Now, my mum's the word. Well, what do you know about that? Benny. Mrs. Powell. I, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I couldn't help overhearing what Tim said. You won't say anything, will you, Mrs. Powell? He'd think I squealed on him. Benny, he can't keep doing this kind of work. It'll kill him. It's the only work he can do. Stop. I wonder... I wonder if it is. You wanted to see me, Bill? Yeah, yeah, Tim. Uh, close the door and sit down. Well, well, what can I do for you? Tim, how long have you been in the stock room? How, how long? How many years? Why, almost twelve and a half. Pretty long time in one job, don't you think? Oh, I got no complaints. Are you uh, trying to say there's something wrong with me work? No, 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 not a thing. I know I, I haven't been a, a ball of fire this last week, but I, I'm just working back into things gradually. No, it's not that. I, uh, I was wondering how you'd like a promotion. Promotion? Into sales. Sales? You mean... Out on the floor, in China. Why not? You know the line. But, but I, I thought you were thinking of Celia. I, I mean Mrs. Powell for that oh, job. Oh, I considered her. But I don't think she's ready yet. Well, I... Ah, no, I, I wouldn't be any good for it. How do you mean? Well, I, well, I, ain't, I haven't got all those social ways. 
like you'd need for talking sweet to the customers. Well, you could pick that up without much trouble, if you uh, tried. No, no, I, I, I don't think so. Well, Tim, it's either sales or the warehouse. The warehouse? That's right. Personnel says we have to make an opening in the stock room for a job trainee starting next week. It's part of a new executive training program. But why can't they take somebody else's job but mine? I got seniority rights. Sure, that's why you're being offered the promotion. You'll get a raise, too. I, I don't know about being out there on the floor. I, I've only got one Sunday suit. Well, if you'd rather take the warehouse... Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't be so hasty. After all, I, I do have a pretty fair knowledge of the line. You said so yourself. No question about it, Tim. And... And I, I, I guess I got as much business being a salesman as the rest of them pipsqueaks. Tim, I think you'd make a fine salesman if you just wouldn't fly off the handle so much. I never fly off the handle. That's what I mean. Oh, well, I... I admit that sometimes I'm a, I'm a bit quick to take offence. But that's because people are so offensive. Tim, what did I tell you? <laughs> oh, all right, Bill, all right. I, 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 I take note. Look, I leave me temper at home. <laughs> Fifth floor, China, household goods. You know something, I just can't picture Tim in a white shirt and necktie. Well, he's lasted almost three weeks with no complaints from any outraged customers. Yeah. I think he's going to make it. Did you see him in the lunchroom yesterday, Bill? Eating with all the other salesmen? Thanks to you, Celia. Oh, now, you promise never to mention that. I haven't. You're safe. It does seem a little unfair, though, Celia. Tim will always think he beat you out for the job. That's just what I want him to think. One of Timothy's main weaknesses is that he lacks self-confidence. Hey, can you, can you see him anywhere, Bill? No, he ought to be around here somewhere, though. Oh, oh, there he is. Where? Talking to that gentleman in the gray top coat. Oh, yeah. My, doesn't he look short of himself? Oh, <laughs> yes. I can't believe that it's really Tim. Cecilia, what is all the self-confidence stuff? I mean, what difference does it make to you? Oh, Bill. Oh, well, I, I don't mean to pry. Not I... at all, Bill, not at all. It's just that when a man recovers his self-confidence, he's less apt to be bashful about things. Oh? Celia, you mean that Tim has... Tim has become less bashful, a lot less. Oh, look, he sees us. Hi, Tim. Hello there. I can't get over how, how neat he looks. Oh, tell him, Julie. It does him good to hear it. All right, I will. Well, look who's here. Uh, Bill, Julie. Hello, Hello Tim. And Celia. Hello. Good morning, Timothy. Are we keeping you from anything important? Oh, no, no, Celia. I was just telling, uh, telling that gentleman about a new shipment of spore that came in. He's a collector. Very distinguished man. Tim, you know something? You look just wonderful. Thank you, Julie. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how do you like your new job? Oh, very well indeed. It's a handsome shirt, Timothy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's one of the new ones I told you about, Celia. Uh, French pique. Very reasonable, too. Looks real good, Tim. I got three just like it, on the discount. <laughs> well, we won't keep you, Timothy. We're just on our way to the lunchroom. Well, it's a pity I can't join you, but I'm all alone in this section until one. We understand, one. Timothy. We understand. Perhaps tomorrow. For sure. I, I, I mean, for certain. <laughs> well, Tim... I think you're doing a great job. Oh, it's nothing. We're proud of you, Tim. Really, we are. Huh? I'm having the time of my life. Oh, before you go, Celia. Yes, Tim? Uh, you haven't forgot about the rehearsal tonight? No, I haven't forgotten. I mean forgotten. A rehearsal? Hey, uh, yes, the Store Glee Club. Uh, we're getting ready for the Christmas concert. Oh. I didn't know you liked to sing, Tim. Oh, yes, Tim has a fine voice. I was surprised. Uh, it's a baritone. Celia's uh, an alto. You two should come around and join up. We'd, we'd make a quartet. Well, I never thought I'd Excuse see... Excuse me, sir. Are you a salesman? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, just one moment, please. Well, I am rather in a hurry. I, I won't be a moment. I'll have to run, folks. See you tonight, see you there. Seven o'clock. I'll be ready. See you later. Bye, Timmy. Bye, Tim. Sorry to have to lead you, madam. Uh, how can I help you? Well, I'm, uh, I'm looking for something in the way of a gift. Uh, possibly a serving dish. Yes, yes, something like that. I see. Uh, do you have any special pattern in mind? Well, no, not exactly. I uh, Haven't I seen you around here before? About a month ago, over by the elevators? It's, uh, oh, it's not likely, ma'am. 
I, I've only been the salesman in this store for a, just a little over three weeks. Oh, then I could swear that yes, I... Yes, ma'am? Uh, no, 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 there's a, there's a superficial resemblance, but this man was, uh, well, unspeakably rude. I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. And he was dressed like, well, not very neatly. I see. Ah, uh, possibly he was one of the, those that are employed in the stock rooms. Oh, yes, perhaps. But I, well, I, I apologize for asking, Mr. Uh... Uh, Murta. Timothy Murta. Uh, my card, whenever you're in the department. Ma'am. Oh, I thank you, Mr. Murta. And as, well, as I say, I, I do apologize. Oh, yes, yes, I... I can see now that you aren't the same man. Oh, you're quite right, madam. I'm not the same man. Not the same man at all. This is Joan Leslie again. You know, as I was listening to Arthur Shield's wonderful performance as Tim Murtaugh just now, I was reminded of some of my father's Irish cronies who used to visit our house. They were wonderful people. And I remember, as a little girl, how impressed I was by the constant use of such phrases as God love you and God be with you. Actually, these expressions were acts of homage, the lifting up of one's mind and heart to God in the daily life of the 15th century. I'd like to think that today, these greetings have not entirely lost their meaning. That we can and still want to bring God into everyday life. That we can say good morning and mean God be with you this morning. Or good day and mean God be with you today. But to do this, we must have God in our hearts. We must bring him into the home where our daily life starts before we can bring him back into the world. And the way to do this is through family prayer, a family united in prayer, asking God to bring his peace and happiness into the home. And as I say goodbye and mean God be with you, remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood Family Theater has brought you Employees Only, starring Arthur Shields. Joan Leslie was your hostess. Others in our cast were Lorene Tuttle, Gigi Pearson, Hal Gerard, Dave Young, and Jeffrey Silver. The script was written by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Lou X. Lansworth. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present The Martians and the Coys, starring the Kirkwood family, Jack, Lil, and Lee. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.